he ended, and his words replete with guile into her heart too easy entrance won. Fixed on the fruit she gazed, which to behold might tempt alone, and in her ears the sound yet rung of his persuasive words, impregned with reason to her seeming and with truth. Meanwhile the hour of noon drew on and waked an eager appetite raised by the smell so savoury of that fruit, which with desire, inclinable now grown to touch or taste, solicited her longing eye, yet first pausing a while, thus to herself she mused. Great are thy virtues, doubtless best of fruits, though kept from man, and worthy to be admired, whose taste too long forborne, at first essay gave elocution to the mute, and taught the tongue not made for speech to speak thy praise. Thy praise he also who forbids thy use conceals not from us, naming thee the tree of knowledge, knowledge both of good and evil. Forbids us then to taste, but his forbidding commends thee more, while it infers the good by thee communicated, and our want. For good unknown sure is not had, or had and yet unknown is as not had at all. In plain, then, what forbids he but to know? Forbids us good, forbids us to be wise. Such prohibitions bind not. But if death bind us with after bands, what profits then our inward freedom? In the day we eat of this fair fruit, our doom is we shall die. How dies the serpent? He hath eaten and lives, and knows and speaks and reasons and discerns, irrational till then. For us alone was death invented? Or to us denied this intellectual food for beasts reserved? For beasts, it seems, yet that one beast which first hath tasted envies not but brings with joy the good befallen him, author unsuspect, friendly to man, far from deceit or guile. What fear I then? Rather what know to fear, under this ignorance of good and evil, of God or death, of law or penalty? Here grows the cure of all, this fruit divine, fair to the eye, inviting to the taste, of virtue to make wise. What hinders then to reach and feed at once both body and mind? So saying, her rash hand in evil hour, forth reaching to the fruit, she plucked, she ate. Earth felt the wound, and nature from her seat, sighing through all her works, gave signs of woe that all was lost. Back to the thicket slunk the guilty serpent, and well might, for Eve, intent now wholly on her taste, naught else regarded such delight till then as seemed in fruit she never tasted, whether true or fancied so, through expectation high of knowledge, nor was Godhead from her thought. Greedily she engorged without restraint, and knew not eating death. Satiate at length, and heightened as with wine, jocund and boon, thus to herself she pleasingly began. O oh, sovereign, virtuous, precious of all trees in paradise, of operation blessed to sapience, hitherto obscured, infamed, and thy fair fruit let hang as to no end created. But henceforth my early care not without song each morning and due praise shall tend thee, and the fertile burden ease of thy full branches offered free to all. Till dieted by thee I grow mature in knowledge, 
as the gods who all things know. Though others envy what they cannot give, for had the gift been theirs, it had not here thus grown. Experience, next to thee I owe, best guide. Not following thee, I had remained in ignorance. Thou openst wisdom's way, and givest access, though secret she retire. And I perhaps am secret. Heaven is high, high and remote to see from thence distinct each thing on earth. And other care perhaps may have diverted from continual watch our great forbidder, safe with all his spies about him. But to Adam in what sort shall I appear? Shall I to him make known as yet my change? and give him to partake full happiness with me? Or rather not, but keep the odds of knowledge in my power without co-partner. So to add what wants in female sex, the more to draw his love, and render me more equal, and perhaps a thing not undesirable, sometime superior. For inferior, who is free? This may be well, but what if God have seen, and death ensue? Then I shall be no more, and Adam, wedded to another Eve, shall live with her enjoying, I extinct, a death to think. Confirm then I resolve, Adam shall share with me in bliss or woe, so dear I love him, that with him all deaths I could endure. Without him, live no life. So saying, from the tree her step she turned. But first low reverence done as to the power that dwelt within, whose presence had infused into the plant sciential sap derived from nectar, drink of gods. Adam, the while, Waiting desirous her return, had wove of choicest flowers a garland to adorn her tresses and her rural labour's crown, as reapers oft are wont their harvest queen. Great joy he promised to his thoughts, and new solace in her return, so long delayed. Yet oft his heart, divine of something ill, misgave him. He the faltering measure felt. And forth to meet her went the way she took that morn when first they parted. By the tree of knowledge he must pass. There he her met, scarce from the tree returning, in her hand a bough of fairest fruit that downy smiled, new gathered, an ambrosial smell diffused. To him she hasted, in her face excuse came prologue, an apology to prompt, which with bland words at will she thus addressed. Hast thou not wondered, Adam, at my stay? Thee I have missed, and thought it long deprived thy presence, agony of love till now not felt, nor shall be twice, for never more mean I to try what rash untried I sought, the pain of absence from thy sight. But strange hath been the cause, and wonderful to hear, this tree is not, as we are told, a tree of danger tasted, nor to evil unknown opening the way, but of divine effect, to open eyes and make them gods who taste, and hath been tasted such. The serpent wise, or not restrained as we, or not obeying, hath eaten of the fruit, and is become not dead as we are threatened, but thenceforth endued with human voice and human sense, reasoning to admiration, and with me persuasively hath so prevailed that I have also tasted, and have also found the effects to correspond. Opener mine eyes, dim erst, dilated spirits, ampler heart, and growing up to Godhead, which for thee chiefly I sought, without thee can despise. For bliss as thou hast part to me is bliss, 
tedious, unshared with thee, and odious soon. Thou therefore also taste, that equal lot may join us, equal joy as equal love. As thou not tasting, different degree disjoin us, and I then too late renounce deity for thee, when fate will not permit. <laughs> 